Hello and welcome to another episode of Leaders of Transformation. We are in a series on how to start a movement. And right now we're actually going to talk to a gentleman who is uh, actually creating digital transformation within a very large association, which many of you are, are going to be familiar with and or at least have heard of. And he's going to come into this. The movement had already started, if you will, and he's actually come into this and creating transformation within you know, kind of like halfway through, so to speak. So this is going to be a really interesting conversation. I know very valuable to you as a, as a movement maker and aspiring leader of transformation on how you can start your movement and grow it and make the difference that you want to make. So I'm really excited to have with us here today, Todd Unger, who is the chief experience officer and senior vice president of marketing and member experience at the American Medical Association. It's a mouthful. Hi there. But <laughs> it is a mouthful. <laughs> thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure having you, Todd. And uh, thanks for reaching out and recommending that uh, we have this conversation. So you have led digital change initiatives at AOL, Time, uh, Time Inc., and the Daily Racing Forum. Uh, you know, this is not new to you. And yet now you come into this new environment and you look at creating digital transformation, an organization that has been around for quite a while and is probably pretty entrenched in how they do things. So first off, what is your primary focus? What are you tasked with specifically so as, do? Uh, as chief experience officer, I would say I have two roles. The first and foremost is to uh, really amplify and uh, the impact of our mission initiatives at the AMA. And if I do a really good job at that, I will achieve my second objective, which is to grow our membership and uh, retain more members. Got it. Got it. So what is the biggest obstacle as you came on board and are looking to kind of disrupt the way things were done before? Uh, what's been your biz biggest obstacle that you faced so far? Well, I'd say just on the, on the well, I'll call it the consumer side, because I come from the consumer world. Uh, but on the physician side, the biggest obstacle that we face is a lack of awareness of what we do. And there are so many tremendous things that are happening on behalf of patients and physicians at this organization. It's just not been an organization that has spent a lot of time uh, in the marketing and leveraging digital platforms to tell a story of what we're up to. Uh, and then to enable that, which I would say the biggest obstacle is the, the building of that entire infrastructure that constitutes experience today, which is something I, I think a lot of people don't really understand. When I talk about customer experience, they might think of design or they might think of uh, customer service. Um, but I would say that there's a theme song to customer experience today. It's Ariana Grande. And she says, I see it. I like it. I want it. I got it. And uh, there uh, in lies, they say, encapsulates the entire roadmap for anybody that's in marketing today, which is to create a proposition that's meaningful to people, to get it in front of the right target audience, and then to uh, create a seamless environment where people can, uh, you know, opt into your product uh, or become a member. And so all of that is in a tremendous infrastructure that you have to build and staff to make it work. And a lot of those things were new uh, to the AMA. So it's a new language uh, and a lot of new kind of people and a lot of new resources uh, to bring to bear on that. So who is your customer? So uh, we serve, uh, you know, this is a physician, uh, you know, uh, centered organization, uh, basically, uh, and what we're about uh, is being a powerful ally to those physicians and the thing that they love most, which is patient care. They got into this, into medicine to make people better. It's a calling. Uh, so we are all about uh, 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 helping physicians do that. And then we also you know, work closely with medical students and residents, uh, physicians uh, as well. So those are the people that are the members, but then there are also... Those are, there are also uh, additional service providers. Are you getting involved in that in terms of creating this story? Like who, I'm trying to think of who, like who, just to put it in kind of context for people saying, okay, this is an association. So this is not a business trying to sell a widget. This is an association with members and they want to, you want to create awareness. So 
you know, how do you actually do that or who do you do that with? Right. Yeah. And who do you do that to? And so how can you expand it beyond what was before? Yeah. If you think about it, I mean, we serve all physicians. The AMA is the one organization that speaks nationally, you know, for every state and uh, eight state society, medical specialty, you know, we literally run uh, what is kind of like the house of medicine. In fact, I just returned from San Diego last week where, you know, it's kind of like Congress gets together and passes important health policy that then provides the direction to the folks here on, you know, what we're going to do. Um, but uh, you think about, uh, you know, there's membership at the middle. We have about a little over a quarter of a million members. There are about a million and a half physicians out there that we serve that are, you know, uh, some of whom are members. And then they're kind of concentric circles around that. So uh, there's the, the industry that we're influencing in terms of the adoption of the right health technology to make sure it serves physicians and patients' needs. There's uh, the kind of... Uh, policy making congressional environment uh, there are all the other players in the healthcare space uh, pharmaceutical firms uh, uh, you know other healthcare IT companies uh, that constitute that kind of environment uh, that we're working within and then there's the general public so you know it kind of emanates from that core of membership and reaching all physicians through our house of delegates and the federation of all these state medical specialty societies Got it. So do you find that it's different than working in a, a company horse like racing. AOL? Or <laughs> horse racing. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a little different. It's funny because I would say the context is so incredibly different in terms of being in healthcare and working with physicians, but the mechanics are very, very similar to what I was doing before. And so, you know, in my prior uh, role. I was, you know, running a media, a digital media platform. Uh, we were bringing on members uh, for, with premium content or a betting platform. Uh, and that kind of uh, ecosystem, which is a, com a combination of e-commerce and content and content marketing is very similar to what's happening here. Uh, so uh, I had no idea that the mechanics would be so similar, but uh, you know, that experience that I had before I came here combined with, you know, the consumer marketing part of my career before digital and every other site and operation I've ever worked on are all coming to play here in this incredible uh, way that I didn't expect. So what lights you up about this, this whole, I mean, I'm, there must be a story behind this, how you actually got to this point and are and I can see it in your eyes, like you're excited about this, you know, this, the, what, the potential of what you can create. I mean, I really am excited to be here. And I've now been here, I guess it'll be three years in February. And the thing that really excites me is making change incredibly fast toward uh, a very, you know, specific goal, which is growth. And I've always been uh, motivated by growth and uh, love the world of you know digital digital marketing and content because it's so easy to see if you're succeeding or not uh, so what's been a pleasure about being here is the amount of support um, that i get from our senior management from this organization and from its members who are so excited to see us really stepping up into this digital world and taking that message out and really connecting uh, with our audience around the work that we're doing well, and a lot of physicians, and I don't want to stereotype, but I would say that likely a lot of physicians, similar to I know a lot of lawyers who are not necessarily on social media, that's not their platform for generating business for a lot of them traditionally, right? They think, oh, that's kind of like a, a fluffy thing that you do on the side. <laughs> similar to physicians who are doing the work that they're doing, they're mm -hmm. so busy doing it that they're not necessarily sitting in front of Facebook. Oh, I'll, posts, I'll tell you what, but, that is yeah. one of the myths I've had to dispel here. Yeah. Um, there was a belief that we would not be able to reach physicians on social platforms, especially Facebook. Wrong. Uh, physicians are spending a lot of time on social media. They're spending a really? lot of time talking to each other. Uh, and uh, are probably our most effective platforms at communicating with physicians uh, through the, uh, and telling the AMA story is through platforms like Facebook. Um, which really? are, uh, wow. you know, super targeted, 
uh, and our, our folks are there and they correspond with us. One of the interesting things, I know you had an interest in like who have been influencers and who are kind of these ambassadors is we, we will see all these conversations that are happening about Facebook and that common thread of really not being aware of what the AMA is doing in a particular space. And we're not able to participate. A lot of those are in private groups on Facebook. Uh, and so what we've done is work with you know, our ambassadors, for the uh, uh, sake of a better word, uh, and, and ardent members to say, listen, we need you to be able to tell this story and we need you to be able to inject the facts uh, into a discussion and let people know we're on it. Right. So what are some of the things that you might post uh, on social media related to your association? Like how do you present the story? And again, I'm thinking back to our listeners um, who are looking to start a movement or grow their movement, expand their movement. Mm -hmm. And some of them are going to be, more of an association style yep. set up. So we, you know, we have a tremendous content marketing uh, operation and development here. And a part of what we do as any, you know, good digital media organization would do is work to maximize the distribution of that content that we create. And it's created, you know, as scientifically as content marketing, you know, best practices would suggest these days to make sure that we're producing content that our audience is interested in and that we're you know, pushing that out in the appropriate channels to reach them. I would say there are other kind of two main kind of pillars of the other marketing directions we have. One is to provide compelling and tangible proof of what we're achieving on behalf of patients and physicians. And so everything that we do through our advocacy work, uh, we will we'll tell people about it. This is not an organization anymore that just waits you know, for someone to maybe see a press release out there. Now, uh, here's a great example. We uh, passed a resolution in our house last week uh, that said the AMA uh, you know, voted basically to remove all non-FDA approved devices, vaping devices. And so that gets a lot of pickup and it's our responsibility to complement the work that our media team does to make sure the word on that goes out and we begin to enroll physicians in that movement. So there are a series of those kind of tangible things that we're doing that we weren't telling people about actively. Uh, the second part is, you know, you know, people's, uh, you know, not only do they have like a deficit of knowledge about what we're up to, they may have a very different opinion of the AMA that came from, you know, years ago history or something that kind of, you know, stuck in their mind, but did, they may have disagreed with. So a big part of what we do is uh, to tell people, this is not the AMA you remember. Uh, this is a very different organization and one that you should be part of. So one of the great things we've done just in the last uh, month or so. It's Women in Medicine Month, uh, which for us is now uh, Women in Medicine, period, uh, because we have the great fortune right now of having three consecutive women presidents of the AMA. Right now, it's this like kind of once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for us to tell that story. Like, if you thought this was, you know, a different kind of organization, it's not. Uh, we are very mission-driven, diverse, and we are, you know, accomplishing all of the things that you really care about. That is awesome. Well, and yes, that would be, there would be a lot of pickup to that, even just women leaders, you know, and that's certainly a hot topic. So what, what are some uh, considerations that you, you have had to take into consideration as you've taken on this role? And even for yourself, maybe that's mm -hmm. part of it is, is, you know, you may have had physicians that are saying, well, what does this person know about our industry? You know, coming from the, you know, different backgrounds that you had. Um, so what are some of the considerations that you needed coming in? So some of the listeners, well, all the listeners in some form or fashion are leaders. I believe that we're all leaders, right? Because we're leaders of transformation. Some of us are aspiring. Some of us are further down the path. Um, but as leaders, as you go in and you want to affect change, and you go into an organization and we always hear, you know, we, we hear those stories, right? Of leaders that come in and they try shaking things up right off the bat and they get resistance from that. And we talked briefly about that earlier. Um, 
but also even just, you know, when you're making changes at any, at any point, right? Like there are some considerations that you need to take when you're dealing with many people with many different backgrounds, you talk about diversity, many different viewpoints, life experiences, biases, and so forth. What are some of the things that you've needed to take into consideration so that you can have a unified member base? And like you said, grow that member base significantly. Yeah, I would say, um, going back to your earlier part, there's a term I really love. It's called productive disruptor. Uh, it's a term I, I actually got from Russell Reynolds, uh, the folks that brought me here. But, uh, you know, it's about a person that can come in and lead a transformation uh, but not be essentially a bull in a china shop and just kind of upset anything, upset, upset everything with, you know, highfalutin ideas about digital transformation. This is brass tacks. I mean, I got brought in, you know, initially with a very, very specific focus on how to grow our membership, especially how do we enroll more physicians and keep them as part of this organization. So uh, this is a, you know, a very, it was very directed when I first got here. Uh, and one thing I discovered very quickly and that I really love, and it's, I love our members and I love working f with physicians, is because they're very data-driven. Uh, this is like part and parcel of being a physician is you are about the data, you're about the research, you're about trying new things, seeing how it works, and if it works, then that becomes part of like practice. And so what I do here is very similar to that. I don't make up the stuff they do all the work. Our advocacy team does all of the work. We have all these subject matter experts who are doing this amazing work. I just need to tell more people about them. So for the most part, this is a win-win a, a situation for this entire organization because people want to see their work uh, distributed more. They want to reach more people. It's in everyone's best interest to see our mission initiative succeed. And the way that I was able to do that, I think, was to kind of bring these worlds of mission and membership together. They're not different and they're not, the membership organization is not something that kind of sits like over on the side on like some different floor. We're here to build membership and grow that by telling everyone how effective we are as a mission-based organization. So I kind of, uh, I'd say, learned that early in to my, uh, my time here. And a lot of it has been like just this constant drumbeat and momentum around small wins and building a story about how we can really see massive results uh, from making changes into how we approach things. Uh, so that's been kind of the, the gist of what I've been up to and it's been a lot of fun. I'd say the, it's, you know, in every transformation, everything I've ever been a part of, there is that kind of like, it's kind of like bike gears. You know, your first gear, you know, you're, you're rapidly, you know, pedaling uphill. <laughs> and so you're doing, you're working as hard as you can. There's a lot of stuff happening. You're focusing on the things that are kind of mainly under your control. And then as you spend more and more time here, the, you're shifting, right? You're still going fast, um, but the, it gets, starts to get a little bit harder because of the, you don't have that same kind of early momentum of all those quick wins and all that stuff that everybody's getting excited about and you're digging more deeply into some of the things that are going to make substantial and ongoing improvements. Well, what I also heard in there was if we were to break that down is patience, there's persistence in there. And there's also you, what you did with, you said about the, the physicians being very data driven to find that point of agreement where you could relate to them on their level, which in marketing is obviously critical to do that. You do this in, you know, inherently now, like this is part of who you are and you're so used to doing it. But as the outsider listening in saying, oh, that's what he did, is he found that point of agreement to say, okay, yeah, so we're, we're really doing the same thing. Yeah, we're a just lot doing of, it in a different uh... arena. Yes. A lot of, I mean, I'm, I'm used to listening to customers. It's been my job, you know, my job. Um, I spent a lot of time with physicians, uh, some who like the AMA and some who don't like the AMA, but they would definitely tell you what they think and what they think you should be doing. One of the early ideas that I got from our uh, young physician section uh, was they said, we're tired of seeing stock photos and all of your materials. 
Interesting. Uh, so it's really interesting. Yeah. Like you can sniff those out in a minute. Everything we send out, everything we produce had stock photos of doctors or actors. I said, you know what? I'll take a look at that. And it led to, I'd say, one of like the hugest insights that I've had since I've been here. I started working, uh, uh, there's a photographer, Jeff Shear here in town, who's the Getty Images photographer in Chicago. And through a chance meeting we met and we began an experiment of actually photographing our physicians, medical students and residents. And we started to build those into our promotional materials, into the materials you see at our annual meetings. And, physician, and, and into all the materials you see around here at the AMA and putting a real face on this organization. And uh, a med student who was part of what these shoots were uh, uh, when they were going on, looked at her photo and she said, when I see this picture, I feel powerful. You know, wow. this is a, a young person who is like in the throes of a very intense educational experience, but like her, like other physicians that are in a very intense self-care environment where, you know, not feeling powerful all the time because there are a lot of other players getting in the way of treating patients. But if we could, through the way that we portray them uh, in our materials and to the external audience, these are real people making real change you know, on behalf of their patients and their heroes. And I wanted to show it that way. And if I can have that effect through this one little change that we make in the way that we do our work, then that was a win. So that was a big insight Absolutely. for me and a, a, a neat uh, way to advance the work that we're doing. Absolutely. And listening, getting that feedback. It, yeah, it makes sense though, because when you think of those stock photos and they're posing, there's no heart. They don't have a heart for what they're doing. They're just posing to make it look good. And so it's, it's like an empty visual, if you will. Yeah, Might one be of, uh, well done, but still yeah. an empty visual. Yeah. We, uh, so I just, I mentioned we have our, uh, you know, our big, two big meetings a year. And now when physicians, students, residents walk into, you know, this enormous, there are 2000 people at this event and they walk in and they see the faces of their fellow physicians you know, on 20 foot banners hanging from the ceiling or on these big pillars uh, at the entryway, it, it, it really changes yeah. how they see themselves and the sense of power they feel as physicians and uh, the sense of power that comes by being a part of this organization. So that is yeah. a, you know, a small change that you can make, but it is, an, I've you know, figured that it's, it's an important part of customer experience is the marketing. Absolutely. And so you can't forget Absolutely. That. Yeah, and and you're you're actually showcasing, like you said, they're heroes, and you're showcasing those heroes. There's yeah. also something to aspire to that one day maybe my picture will be on there as well. You know, there's that as yeah. well. So, very very cool. So, what what do you env envision the future of the AMA to be? What's what do you? I mean, growth obviously, and is there a, some specific outcome that you're looking for beyond that? I mean, for us, uh, you know, again, we go back to that being a powerful ally to physicians in patient care. And, you know, the way that we, you know, come to be able to, ex to explain what it is that we do has uh, come a long way. So we represent physicians with a unified voice. We remove the obstacles between them and patient care. We are leading the charge on the public health crises that physicians and patients face today. And we're driving the future of medicine. So for us, it's having, you know, that single-minded focus on, you know, putting points on the board in those areas and truly serving our audience and the patients that they serve and making sure they're aware of what we're doing for them. And if we do that really well, then we will see continuous and more dramatic growth uh, in, in our membership. So we're, we're about to uh, close what will be our ninth consecutive year of membership growth, especially in that ever important physician category. This is a big win for us, a big win for our organization. And I think if you like just look at the papers and uh, kind of look what's out there, you're seeing the AMA's name a lot more because we are really making that effort to let people know what we're doing. So of all of the physicians, and I don't know what the numbers are, you probably know the numbers, um, of how many physicians there are across the U.S., how many are actually part of the association? So uh, I think it's always really important, you say there are about a million and a half physicians out there, students and residents. We represent all of them. So we are that unified voice 
where everybody comes together and generates what is the health policy that guides physicians and the rest of the healthcare industry through our House of Delegates. And that is an amazing thing to see in action, which I get the privilege of doing twice a year. Um, of that, there are smaller subsets. You know, we're reaching 1.3 uh, million unique users a month through the AMA's, just the AMA website. Uh, and then we have about 255,000 members. And so, again, think about concentric circles yeah. of uh, the you know, different degrees of their engagement with the AMA. Yeah. Yes, that's right. You were mentioning those numbers earlier. Mm-hmm. I didn't, didn't realize that was the number of how many physicians there were in, in the country. But that's, that is great. You've got a huge impact regardless. And I appreciate what you said there, that we represent all of them regardless of whether or not they're members or not, but the, you're you're actually overseeing, and that is a um, that is a great point, which seems obvious, but it's a great point. Again, I come back to people that are starting and building a movement, is to recognize that it's not just the people that are involved in your movement, or the people that support your movement, that you're actually uh, supporting or that you're actually representing. You're representing everyone in the process of that. And so to think seriously about how you communicate uh, the message out there is really, really important. So. Yeah. And I'd say yeah. even, you know, before that, as you're targeting, like you mentioned, you know, there are so many different ways to segment an audience by those that are believers that are in the middle, or then there are like people that are just never going to come around. Uh, then there are other layers of that based on what people are interested in. Uh, and that kind of innovation in our segmentation has been something that underlies a lot of the results that we're seeing here because we're talking to people about things they care about, which is if you go back to that infrastructure I talked about before, like you are competing against so many other things that people are actually interested in. So you've got to pry them away from Netflix and pry them away from their passion for medicine or whatever it is and be a thing they care about. Yes. If you want to break through. Yes. So we talk a lot about physicians. You also bring in, speaking of segmentation, you have insurance. There are uh, people that are, you know, the, the insurance industry, health insurance, uh, government, technology. So you've got all these different parties that you're actually bringing together um, to create something really amazing. So, yes. Yeah. So we're, uh, we uh, uh, have just uh, come off a big, uh, you know, initial win in an area around coding, which sounds kind of like a very technical term, but it's that thing that, you know, when you uh, you're submit to an insurance company that helps physicians get reimbursed. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, between electronic health records and the way that that all came together, a lot of inefficiency. That's one of those obstacles that really stands between physicians and patients in that they spend, on average, for every hour that they're with a patient talking directly to them, two hours doing paperwork and sitting behind a computer screen. And so we're working with uh, CMS, which is Center Gate for Medicaid uh, Services in Washington, uh, and their organization and leadership to help reduce the burden around, uh, you know, this unnecessary documentation. And there was a big step forward last week where, you know, we're really working toward return time to physicians so they can spend it talking to their patients and not doing paperwork. Brilliant. Todd, thank you so much for coming on and sharing a little bit of like peeling back the layers on this organization so that people can better understand the story, can better understand the mission and not just say, oh, there's this association which gathers a bunch of physicians, but what are you actually doing and how are you doing it so that you can make a greater impact? Really appreciate it. And I encourage our listeners to go and check out what they're doing. Whether you're a physician or not, check out the organization and just observe and notice what we, what we've shared, what what Todd has talked about here, how that is actually playing out in their website, in their social media. And you know what, even like people like myself, we can help to spread the word, you know, and the create awareness around what this organization is doing and how we can support it. So the AMA, so, so it's www.ama.com dash A-S-S-N dot org is the website. And we'll make sure, of course, that's in the show notes uh, as well so that you can you can access that. And also for those of you that are looking to reach out to Todd, we'll make sure that his social media handles and 
details so that you can reach out to him as well. We'll be here uh, because hopefully somebody's you know going to be listening and they're also going to want to for this the conversation. Maybe you're going to want to have Todd on your show, um, your podcast. We have a lot of podcast hosts that listen to our show and or that um, you just want to learn more about the organization and, and be aware of it and, and learn from what they're doing so that you can apply it to yours. So again, Todd, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. This has been uh, a blast. Yes, yes, absolutely. And for our listeners and our viewers, you know, I encourage you to take action. Leaders of Transformation, take action. So if this has piqued your interest and you look at it and you say, you know what, I know that I need to learn more about this digital space and I didn't see how our organization fit into this or how we could share our message, but now I have a little bit better insight. We'll do something with that insight today so that you can move forward because that's where transformation happens. And, you know, we'd love to hear your stories. So you can go on leadersoftransformation.com. You can send me a message through our contact page, or you can go on social media and follow us there and tell us what you've discovered through this, how you're applying this. If you have questions, please reach out to us and let us know what those questions are. I can certainly pass those on to Todd if they're directed towards Todd, but we really want to create that dialogue with you so that we can help you with what it is that you need to be able to move forward and be the leader of transformation that you're capable of being and further the movement. You know, this, this series again is called how to start a movement. It's not just a movement where, you know, you have a bunch of followers. It's a movement where you inspire millions to action. You know, you bring people along with you. And so there are certain tools or certain insight that you need to be able to do that. And that's what we're hopes our hope is here with this podcast and this particular series is so that you can learn from people that are doing it so that you can apply it in your own in your own way and so again take action on something that you learned here we love to hear your stories and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode of leaders transformation real soon <music>